Yesterday, I posted a video about the Shea Moisture Backlash, and I had a conversation with my good friend, Lovely T, about the other side of the argument that a lot of the women were having. And that's why I like talking to T, because she can look at my video, critique it, I can look at hers, and we can have a good dialogue as content creators and help me to understand some things. And I told her my position, she understood some things that I was saying. And I will never back off from supporting black owned businesses and want to see multiple billion dollar corporations that's black owned. That's first and foremost. And yes, in business, you're gonna make mistakes. Well, you are. And we should not ever call for the end of a black owned business. I will never call for that unless you're doing some wrong stuff. But there's a problem here with Sundial Brands, which is the company that Shea Moisture and Nubian Heritage Products is under. The sister on Twitter, and God bless his sister, uh, Beautiful Soul 40, she shared some information with me about Sundial Brands. She shared that they using the man as a cover, which is a brother, in the background, Black people aren't running things. And she brought receipts with it, pointed to me where it's at. I went and looked at it, and now I'm about to share it with you. So let's go ahead and go to the computer. Now, we here on the computer, and we put in a search on LinkedIn. And it's going to show us who have a lot of prominent positions in Sundial Brands, which is Shea Moisture and Nubian Heritage, that a lot of us are purchasing. Now, the accusations was... Shea Moisture or Sundial Brands have forgotten about the core demographic, but it's way deeper than that commercial. And you're going to see who's running things as Sundial Brands, and now you're going to understand that commercial and possibly why the formula has changed. Maybe they want the formula to be used by everybody, or maybe they just want to do it in a cheaper way and still get the same money. Either way it go, is wrong to change a formula if it was helping the sister's hair that need that type of moisturizing for what I was told and educated on, especially women with 4C hair, if I'm saying it just right. Now, we on the main page here, and let's go into this as you see the faces. Now, Elizabeth Latore. Now, she's the marketing manager at Sundial Brands. Now, that's not the core demographic. I don't have an issue with it, but you're going to keep seeing it's going to become a pattern. So as you can see, as we go down, she's the marketing manager at Sundial Brands. And marketing managers have to do with commercials as well. So you can see what she is responsible for. Working in collaboration with our marketing team, innovation and brand to build out programs and promotions happening throughout the year. We don't know if she was responsible for some of those commercials, but she is definitely a marketing manager. Now, this is the guy, of course, um, the Shea Marsh CEO. And if you notice on this picture, he's talking about multicultural customers. Now, he's the figurehead, but let's go on. Now, this person, Richard Gallucci, he's the senior vice president of sales at Sun Brand, Sundial Brands LLC. Okay, well, we see in this pattern, so I think it's a little bit deeper than a commercial. And he has been there for a while. Uh, he was the vice president of sales, uh, so he's been working there for years. Now, we go to the next person, it's a sister here. Um, Miss Harris, she's a brand director at Shea Moisture. I'm not gonna focus so much on her because I mean, how we feel, I mean, that is the core demographic, uh, the sisters. Now, Alyssa Fisher Harris, she's the Western Regional Sales Director and Healthy Living Expert at Sundial Brands. I just want you guys to see the pattern here. Now she talks about all the health stuff and the bath body hair, uh, baby men's women's shave uh, categories and all this other stuff but yet she is in charge of this this brother here cyrus dennis he um a yale graduate in the yale school of management like i said i'm not gonna focus too much on him uh as well james neal he's a formulation chemist at sundial brands 
So we seeing the pattern. Elite T.O. Calderon, he's a senior warehouse manager. Joseph Garcia, he's another chemist that worked there. Andrea uh, Neves, and I'm saying it just right, innovation manager at Sundial Brands. Okay, Shea Moisture, especially at her expertise, bath and body, skin care, and baby. Now, I don't have an issue with them hiring people. I don't. Or having a diverse um, employment. But in some of these positions, we don't see what we would see, let's say, at a Caucasian-owned company. Now, this is a Diane C. Bailey. She's the brand ambassador, consulting stylist as an event artist at Sundial Brands. Gregory Elder, that brother's director of customer service at Sundial Brands. Lauren E. Wall, she's the associate communications manager at Sundial Brands. She also involved herself with public relations and events. Andrea for Tunado, if I'm not saying it right, could be wrong. Now she's the marketing coordinator. Is she a part of the new push that's happening with Shea Moisture? We don't know, but she's in a position to make sure that happened. And you can see what she's supposed to do. Uh, improve communication, efficiencies within the company, research media coverage and industry trends. And you see all the things that she is doing as a marketing coordinator. She's also a freelance makeup artist at Chanel. And you see all the things that she's doing. She's still a beauty advisor at Chanel. So she has multiple hats and also at Sundial Brands. This brother here, he's the senior director of sales at Sundial Brands. Brendan P. Holden, let's look at him. He's the Senior Vice President of Operations at Sundial Brands. This man here. Um, the CEO is a brother, but everybody just about underneath him is looking like any other corporation. Now, to say that black women is the biggest supporter, as you would think, you probably see more of them in a lot of these, especially marketing positions, so, because if you're marketing to black people, wouldn't you use black people to market to black people? Cause we understand what we like, what we don't like. We would understand hair texture, especially the women, not the men. Wouldn't you do that? But they're not doing that. From what we are looking at here, it looks like that Shea Moisture or Sundial Brands is not what it used to be. It looked like it has been infiltrated and they hired these people on their own. I'm not blaming none of these people for the jobs they're doing. I'm just showing you what they're doing. Now this guy worked for Cablevision before he worked for tops. Uh, he worked for Phoenix brands and Unilever, which Unilever is a big um, company that has a lot of products, but this is the man that's the senior vice president of operations. This man here is an Indian man. He is a senior director of technology at Sundial Brands. The next person, Tom Nestor. He is the chief revenue and chief customer officer at Sundial Brands. So, I mean, I just want you to look at this. Who's running it? Issa Mallorca, if I'm saying it right. She is the uh, vice president of strategic planning. Uh, since 2013 in the Chicago area. So she's been there three years and six months. This brother here is the director of community operations. This sister is a owner and freelance hairstylist. Now she is a beauty ambassador. She's been there three years and three months. She also is a freelance hairstylist with Tressa May as well for 10 years. Um, and she talks about other things she's done as hairstylist. She's a style team manager as well at Tressa May, and she's still with Sundial Brands. Gladys Pagan, she is a payroll manager at Sundial Brands. She's been there about a year. And Juliet Korakuwik, she is a social media and digital marketing. Um, she's been there for about seven months. I'm you this to let you know that the sister suspicions were correct. I didn't know this information. And with all this information being said, the CEO has some explaining to do. And it goes way past that apology that he posted 
because we talk about we don't have chances in corporate America. We don't get chances in the hiring and we exclude it. And so when you hear some people say we can't have anything, it's now it's a little bit deeper than we can't have anything because in order for us to grow, we have to literally not look like any other corporation because think about it. If you look at Univision, you look at white owned companies, it's not a bunch of us that's through there, a bunch of blacks. It's people like them. Not to say that we ain't working there, but it doesn't look opposite of what, especially they're marketing to. How would that look if you have something that for Hispanic people, but yet black people, they doing all the marketing for it and they're not even a black Hispanic, but we doing everything. How would we know? How would some of these Caucasian women know what we like, what will appeal to us? How? And why is it that the women isn't focused more in this company than what we see? That's the only thing I think you guys need to ask the CEO about this. And I know some of you really going to get on the tangent about let's boycott them. And at this point, I just think they got some explaining to do. I'm not going to advocate anything. I'm just saying the information's there. You see it. You see who they hire. Now I understand the commercial way more than I understood it yesterday because you see who is behind it with all these people in certain positions, people that <clears throat> people that don't understand our culture, don't understand the hair on the women's side who can't really relate to that. Now we get it. Boy, I tell you, when people start digging, you find out a whole lot of things. And it's just amazing, like I said, that sister start digging in this, all the stuff that came out. It's amazing how things could change in 24 to 48 hours. We had a brand that promoted themselves to the black community and say they can solve the issues that the black community have in the area of hair. And yet, in order to grow, they literally have to push all black people out and change their formula where it's not even helping black people anymore. Some women said their hair are breaking off of the products now, and those products are very expensive for that to be happening or they're not having their hair being moisturized anymore. This is what they're telling me. So I'd like to know you guys' opinion on this because this is really, really interesting and crazy at the same time. If you appreciate the news and information you receive on this platform, consider supporting us on Patreon for a minimum of $5 per month. The mainstream media would love to shut this platform down and we need your help to keep it alive. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video, like the commentary, and subscribe for more news stories.